Sydney, for many who come here, it is a postcard of idyllic views, sparkling harbours, iconic buildings and a high quality of life. But for those who have been here the longest, the reality of life in Australia's larger city can be very different. Recent statistics show a cycle of poverty and marginalisation that began over two centuries ago still affect today's Indigenous community. This is Belmore Park, right in the heart of Sydney's CBD. Office workers get their lunch here, some people go for a short walk. But for others, this is home. My name is Carmel Turner. I'm 44. I've actually been for 30. And I love it out here, but I would love it. I would love to be home too. I, I, I would like to keep my tents out here because this is my space from all my pains. And my friends are out here. I can't get the home for all of us to stay. Carmel has lived in Belmore Park for nearly three decades. She is lovingly known as mum by the local kids who come to her for help. She, like many other homeless locals, lives in a small tent in a park next to Central Station. Carmel is a part of the 3% of Indigenous, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders currently living in Australia. Unfortunately, she is also an extreme example of the poverty that almost 20% of Indigenous people experience compared to just 12% of the rest of Australians. Harsh poverty such as Carmel sees the lifespan of Indigenous Australians trailing behind the rest of Australia's residents by a decade. Indigenous Australians rely on support payments in high numbers. They are overrepresented in accessing youth allowance, parenting payments and new start allowance. However, one falls short, the age pension. This is because only one third of the Indigenous population is living till 65. Carmel is an example of how people can slip through the cracks even in Australia's most prosperous city. I'm out here with no one. Just my little tent. It hurts. And there's a lot of people out here doing the same. But the only thing that we're out here for is to get a house for our children. So we can get it back, get them back to make our lives even better. <laughs> Carmel began her life on the streets when tragedy struck her father and left her homeless. I lost her home when my dad passed away in birth. Housing decided to walk into my home, take everything out. Docs walked in and took my children. Carmel's story isn't an isolated one and help is there, but with funding cuts stretching support networks, it can seem like a long wait. There is a lot of support for you. And I take them, I take the, like, I do what they have me to do. To get what but, you need. Yeah, but it's taking too long. 